The tragedy has hit very closely for my next guest, Zaid Al-Rawi, who is the CEO of Islamic Relief Canada, which is the largest Muslim charity, and uh, my guest this morning. And it's a pleasure to have you in, Zaid. Thank you very good. much Thanks for coming in. The attacks took place on Sunday night, and your phone started to ring. What were people saying and offering? Um, first, it was uh, people wanting to know, do we have any connection? Do we know who it is? Do we know what's going on? It was just a, a question after question. Um, but very quickly, um, people were calling saying, look, I, I'm going to give you some uh, support, some financial support, and I want you to give it to the families. And we didn't know what to do with that, because we, we weren't, you know, we, we had you some connection. You hadn't solicited that, had you? No, This was no, just, spontaneous just spontaneous offers of, of financial no, absolutely, assistance. absolutely. We hadn't thought of that. We hadn't. So we contacted the mosque and we said, is this something you think will be helpful? Um, and they said it would be helpful. And so we accepted the first few and it just kept coming and kept coming. And, um, and where then, are you now in terms of monies? Well, we're, we've raised over $100,000 $100, for the families and the victims. Plus That's incredible. one donor's generously supported the entire he said he wants to cover the cost of the funerals and and that's the CEO of Paramount Foods yes, correct that's yeah. on the record that's on the record yeah he's yes he has, said, yeah. he's going to cover the cost of the funeral so absolutely. all of this money the remaining money goes to the the widows and the families absolutely right absolutely right. the widows well, and the families and the wonderful. victims and we'll, we'll be working with the mosque as well to see the wider community how we can support them uh, because this is a traumatic event and one that nobody should have to live through but once lived through support is essential so we'll be working closely with them to make sure we provide whatever support we can when the money since you've raised the issue of this will go to cover the cost of funerals we're learning more details about that right now obviously the preparations are underway the traditional call would be to, to bury Muslims within 24 hours right immediately Precisely. correct yeah. this has been delayed by the criminal investigation absolutely yeah and is that how, how is that viewed within the Muslim community? Is that something that's very upsetting? Yeah, no, it's all. I mean, we understand, okay. I mean, the, the families understand that, you know, the, uh, the nature of things is a little different. And um, as soon as it becomes, uh, it's, a po it's possible, the burials are, are happen. So. And what are you understanding in terms of where the funerals will be held, when they will be held, any details surrounding that? Well, it, there was a big meeting yesterday and some of our team members were working with the mosque to figure out the details. It won't be, it won't be at the mosque, it will be at the, a venue, a large enough venue will be hired out for the day. Um, and then the funerals will be in Quebec, City, for three of the victims will be in Quebec City, and then the burial will be in Montreal. Um, and that's an interesting point because there is no Muslim burial ground in Quebec City. No, the closest one is, is Montreal, so mm -hmm. uh, it's quite normal for um, the deceased of, uh, of Quebec to go to Montreal, make that final journey up west to Montreal. And then for the other three, they won't be buried in Canada? Is that the understanding? Their families prefer that they be buried in their um, place of birth. Um, so they'll be repatriated back to their countries of origin. Um, and so that's... So you know that some of these details, not just from your personal connections to the mosque in Quebec City, but also because you're going to be attending on Friday. It seems like it might be quite a, ground, a groundswell of support with Muslims attending from across the country. What are you expecting on Friday? Uh, what we're expecting, I mean, Quebec's out there, um, but we're expecting many people to make the journey. A lot of people have been calling me to say, you know, is there any, is there any kind of pooled uh, transportation? I, I don't know if there is. Um, but certainly, I think what's been heartwarming about this entire uh, episode, as sad and as heartbreaking as what happened was, and you know, we really do pray and for the uh, uh, for those who are grieving to have you know forgot to help them through this really hard time. But there's been such a loud rejection of hate and intolerance across Canada from every community. The Muslim community obviously will uh, rally around this community in Quebec, but it's way beyond that because people have understood that. Intolerance, once it's a wildfire, once it gets going, it will just burn everything we know and love. Our values of you know, equality and justice and fairness will just go and we'll be looking back wondering what happened, what happened to the Canada we loved? Everyone's hating everyone. So I think that's been the, the most, um, the silver lining, so to speak. Really? I was going to ask you that, that very thing, whether for you these few days, whether the image has been on the ugliness of the attack on Sunday yeah. or the incredible scenes of the vigils, for example, across the country and the support and the offers that you have received, it seems like... Yeah, it's been, it's been both. I mean, it's been really, I mean, m Muslims have been saying for quite a while, look, we're at, we're, we're at the sharp end of terrorism. The Muslims uh, across the globe are, you know, have the highest numbers of victims to terror from 
you know, from terror groups who are basically neo-fascists, but cloak them, themselves in, you know, the garbs of religion and piety, and they have nothing to do with religion or piety. Um, so we're on the receiving end there, and then there's the whole image that's created that we are all one and the same by some people on, on, on the extreme right saying, yeah, you're all you're all the same, and you're all kind of so. And so on the one hand, we're you know we're victimised on. You know, in, in the mosques across the globe, and the other where, oh, you're the enemy. So th this has been a, um, there's been a lot of frustration about the tone, the language that's been used mm -hmm. uh, by politicians, by leaders, by uh, some, some media agents, you know, agencies. And so it's sad that it took this to happen. People say, hold on, let's just step back a little bit and let's just see what all this actually means when we say all, oh, you know, when we just generalize and demonize an entire community and make it okay to publicly start being racist and you know say really horrible mean things to an entire community regardless so it's been very it's been a very powerful response from Canada it has all, all across and media people politicians as well acknowledging they need to revise their language and oh, lower it's the, been, the heat it's been of really the debate heartwarming. it and really has I'm really hopeful that this is this is a turn that people understand that Intolerance from any community to any community is wrong. That is the one thing we cannot tolerate and we have to stand up and be strong against and right. regardless of where it's coming from. Say thank you for coming in. Appreciate it's been an it. Pleasure. Thank uh, you. A pleasure to speak with you and we'll be obviously following on Friday and in touch if you uh, indeed are joined by many from the Toronto area heading to Quebec City. Thank and so again, much. the money continues to pour in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now,